So welcome everybody. So let's begin the presentation on introduction to statistics. I'll just uh, share my screen now and try and uh, explain uh, the basics of statistics before we uh, try and demonstrate something on uh, Excel as well. So uh, I have shared my screen. I'm sure uh, you all can see this. So today's presentation is on the basics of statistics. I'll try and talk about, uh, uh, you know, the different kinds of variables, ordinal, by, uh, you know, nominal, uh, uh, interval ratio, and so on and so forth. I'll then talk about the basics of uh, uh, mean, median, mode. What is standard deviation and how does correlation work? Uh, demystify some of the things surrounding all these concepts. For some of you, this might be very new, but uh, uh, this is, as I said, you know, just about logic. This is not about mathematics at all. So please bear with me, and I'm sure within the next 45 minutes, you will uh, get to learn some very important things. So let's start our presentation. Uh, earlier, we've spoken about these level of measurements. We've spoken about what is a categorical variable. We've spoken about uh, what is a We've spoken about uh, what is a binary variable, what is a nominal scale, and what is an ord ordinal variable. Let me just explain it once again. Uh, Right. So a categorical variable is made up of categories. It is just uh, the name that uh, uh, you know distinguishes entities from each other. It could be the states, it could be people, it could be your IPL teams. So they are just categories. In the simplest form, these categories can be of two types. They're either male or female, or they can be yes or no, true or false or whatever. When they are of just two types, they are binary variables. If I use numbers to distinguish uh, these categorical variables, then that is known as a nominal scale. So it's not as if uh, these scales are, uh, uh, you know, uh, very different. They are, they are, they are roughly the same kind of scales. But uh, in a nominal scale, we are using numbers instead of names. So basically, they are the same thing. Now. Uh, they can be ordinal as well. In ordinal, we have. Uh, rankings so if something is uh, ranked in a particular order that is a, 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 a ordinal variable so we could see you know the ranking on the ipl team for example or we could have the ranking on on various factors so the uh, difference between ordinal variable and the next kind of variable that i'm going to talk about the inter variable uh, interval variable is that in the interval variable there are equal intervals on the scale. That means uh, the distance between 1 and 2 is exactly the same as the distance between 2 and 3, is exactly the distance between 1001 and 1002. So these are equal differences. In an ordinal scale, they are just ranks. They are just ranked from highest to lowest uh, uh, in, in that kind of a manner. So uh, interval variables are very different from uh, uh, They are different from uh, ordinal variables, as you can see. And the uh, distinct uh, the distinction is not just semantic. It's not just in terms of you know how we are describing them. The distance is very mathematical because a lot of the mathematical calculations that we are going to talk about. If I'm using an ordinal variable, there will be some different categories for that. If I'm using an interval variable, there will be different categories for that. So for our purpose today, we'll be talking about these three different kinds of variables. We'll be talking of, about nominal variables where we're just naming those categories ordinal vari variables where they are ranked and there are interval variables where they are actually continuous numbers and uh, in an earlier lecture i've spoken about how likert scales are also uh, taken as interval variables because uh, then we can do a lot of statistical uh, uh, analysis there if we take them as interval variables uh, ratio goes one step further than the interval variable because in the ratio variable there is a true 
and meaningful zero point. So if there is a true and meaningful zero point, that is a ratio variable. Uh, roughly, you know, we'll be dealing with the interval variable most of the time. So if you are clear about interval variables, then we are good to go. Uh, I'm sure uh, most of us have uh, heard about these things. Mean. Mean is like uh, the average of any uh, group. So this is one, one thing that describes a particular population. So if I'm, if I'm to talk about the mean age of the uh, student group right here, so it could be 20, 21 or 22, for example. And that would give me some idea about the mean of uh, some idea about the uh, uh, population or some idea of the people that I'm dealing with. So mean is a very important indicator. Now, the only problem with mean is that if I have outliers, then uh, the mean uh, uh, becomes very different. In that case, uh, uh, the mean has a very, uh, uh, or, or the mean is affected by those outliers. And that is why we have to be extremely careful about uh, uh, outliers. Because uh, say, uh, say I'll, I'm trying to, you know, take the, and I, I give that example quite often. I'm trying to take the mean income of the entire class. Now suddenly, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bill Gates walks in. So what will happen is that there is an outlier. There's one billionaire. And if I take the mean, the entire mean will go up. Say, for example, earlier the mean was uh, one lakh per month. It will suddenly become 100 crore per month. Why? Because there is just one outlier which has skewed the mean towards one direction. So because we have we face this problem, that is why uh, uh, often mean uh, often this. Uh, uh, is not a very good indicator. Often this uh, mean is not a very good indicator. We use the median in, uh, in those cases because median gives me exact middle point. Uh, if we say that the median age of uh, India is 25, that means exactly 50% uh, of the population is below 25 years of age and 50% of the population is above 25 years of age. So median is a very important uh, measure in those cases because it gives me the uh, midpoint or it gives me a, an exact idea of uh, what how the population is distributed and as, as i've just said mean is not a very good uh, number there because if we order these numbers there so this would be 4.5 uh, mode is again another uh, uh, measure of central tendency as they say which is about uh, uh, which of the numbers has the highest frequency say for example if i take the age or if i take the income there is a particular age which has the highest frequency, then that would be mode. So when we are dealing with ordinal or nominal variables, so then these things become more important. Uh, as you can understand, mean and median is uh, only uh, used in case of uh, interval variables generally. Because if I have uh, uh, variables which are not interval variables, then uh, mean and median wouldn't make a lot of sense. Uh, let me just explain you uh, two other things. We are going to talk about these things as well. And it's important that we understand it right at the beginning when we are trying to understand statistics. What is dispersion? What is uh, squared errors? What is variance? And what is standard deviation? If it appears Greek to you, let me assure you uh, uh, in a few moments time, you will understand that these are very simple uh, definitions. It's just that these terms uh, appear very uh, intimidating. They are not at all intimidating. And uh, let me just explain it to you. So what I've done is I have. Uh, taken these figures from the internet, just trying to explain what it means. Say, for example, I have these six scores, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the mean. Say, for example, this could be about age, it could be about income, it could be about your IQ, any kind of a thing. This is the mean. There are four people who have uh, uh, their values more than the mean. And there are these two people whose values are less than the mean. So this is dispersion. This is the meaning of dispersion. This is what, uh, you know, this is uh, what we say as uh, uh, these uh, uh, things being away from the mean in that kind of a manner. Or these things are dispersed around the mean in this manner. If they are widely dispersed, then the dispersion will be huge. Then that would be like uh, the range would be uh, huge. If they are not widely dispersed, the range will not be huge. So uh, let me explain what it means. Uh, so I've just spoken about mean and all of you understand what is mean. Say, for example, I have these 10, uh, six scores. Somebody go, uh, scored 10, somebody 8, another person scored 10, another two scored 8 and 8, another scored 4 in some kind of a uh, online quiz right now. So the mean of that particular thing would be 48. Uh,
the mean would be 48 in that case and i don't think that this requires any explanation this is very very simple basic mathematics so i'm sure uh, people understand the meaning of mean so i just take in the total i divided by the number of observation and i get the mean so very simple if i take the distance of that particular observation from the mean if you remember these six were the observations one person got 10 another person got 8 another got 10 two people got 8 another person got 4 marks and we just calculated the mean was 8 so what i am trying to do is i am trying to find out how much they are away from the mean so since this person got 10 he got two more than the mean since this person got 8 he got exactly what the mean was so that is why this is zero since this person got uh, 10 again he is two more than the mean these two are just uh, uh, on the mean this but person got four less than the mean but i will square it so that you know the positive and the negative signs are taken care of because if i do not square it then the signs will just balance out and i'll be left with nothing so what i'm doing is i'm squaring the distance from the mean this one is 10 uh, this is two away from the mean so i'm squaring it i'm getting four this one is on the mean so the square will also be zero this one is two more than the mean so i'm squaring it and i'm getting Four. This one is four less than the mean, but uh, I'm squaring it and I'm getting sixteen. So this is the sum of squared errors. If you just uh, see the earlier slide, I was going to talk about the sum of squared errors. So that exactly sum of squared errors. I've just told you what is dispersion. Dispersion means how far they are away from the mean. Uh, we'll just see why these things are so very important. Uh, uh, variance is just the average of the sum of squared errors. So, what is the sum of squared errors? This would be twenty-four. Four plus four, eight plus six, twenty-four. And uh, what is the number of observations I have? The number of observations I have is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, variance means I just take the average of the sum of the errors because the number of uh, observations is less. So I take n minus one. Uh, that is not an important issue. Important here is to understand what is variance because most of the things that we'll be going to talk about here. uh including correlation and all the other things they are all based on variance so what variance means is that how far is my uh, you know uh, entire observations how far are they distributed uh, along the mean if the variance is large that means uh, the population has a long range if the variance is less means they are just uh, very closely distributed around the mean but this variance is a very important measure and as i said we are going to talk about logic only So basically, when I have a particular observation, I'm trying to see how far is it away from the mean, and that gives me the idea of the variance. So the variance is very easily calculated in this particular manner. We'll just see how to do it on Excel. So uh, uh, there's nothing to worry about. All these things can easily be done on the Excel. If I take the square root of this variance, that gives me a standard deviation, which again is a very very important measure. because uh, we will again uh, come back to standard deviation in just a moment's time so just to rewind this again uh, what is mean mean is just the average of the values so if i take the average of the values i get the mean if i square the errors and then i divide it by the number of observations uh, in case of very small observations i have to subtract one there but uh, just take the average so there we get the variance if i take the square root of the variance we get the standard deviation so standard deviation is nothing but it's just a measure of how far the uh, observations are from the mean so if the standard deviation is high that means they are uh, uh, far spread off if i take the standard deviation of the age of this particular class all these 35 people then that will be uh, not very high that will be very low because uh, all of you will be around the same age if there is someone who is very uh, young or someone who is very old then the standard deviation will be more so standard deviation again is a very important measure if i know the mean and if i know the standard deviation i can make a lot of predictions so i'm uh, we will talk a lot about prediction uh, in future as well so statistics is also about prediction in fact uh, machine learning is all about prediction and we'll in future classes we'll talk about that as well so if i have the information of the mean i have the information of the standard deviation prediction will uh, come to this uh, very soon so uh, this is the first part of statistics and this is what we have to understand because this is so basic that we'll have to keep on coming back to this what is mean what is uh, 
uh, standard deviation, what is variance, what is sum of squared errors. We'll uh, keep coming back to this as we go along. But it's important that we understand the uh, uh, importance of these particular things. Uh, we will be talking about two different kinds of tests. We are going to talk about parametric and we are going to talk about non-parametric. So today I'm going to discuss parametric. Maybe sometime later we'll talk about uh, non-parametric as well. Parametric uh, tests, they assume a number of uh, conditions. One condition is that the uh, sample must be normally distributed. What is normal? Maybe uh, in another lecture, another video. Uh, they must be interval data. They must have homogeneity of variance. That's very important. That Variance must be homogeneously uh, spread out. So there are certain uh, conditions that these parametric tests have to uh, satisfy. We'll explain what these parametric tests mean. So uh, now we're going to talk about the most important point that we're going to discuss today, which is about uh, uh, the uh, correlation and covariance. Covariance is, as the word suggests, is uh, indicates that as one variable deviates from the mean, the other variable also deviates from the mean. So covariance is a very good way to assess the association between two variables, whether that these two variables are related to each other. And that they can be of many types. For example, if I calculate the time spent on uh, watching Netflix and if I get the uh, time uh, or the amount of marks you get in your examination, I might try to get, uh, you know, some kind of an association. That association can be positive or negative. That's another thing. But as a researcher, as a statistician, I'm trying to find out whether there is any uh, association between these two. And I just told you about the variance, the meaning of variance. Variance means how far it is from the mean. So if uh, one particular variable deviates from the mean in the in one direction and another variable also deviates in the same direction then it is positive covariance say for example if i'm spending more time on studying and i'm getting uh, more marks so if these two variables are moving on the same direction i get the mean and then i find out how much time i have spent the class say for example has spent 50 hours on uh, online classes and i have seven uh, i have spent 70 hours that means i am in a positive direction mean is 50 i have spent 70 the mean marks of the class is is uh, uh, 65 i have got 75 so these are moving in the same direction the time i have spent on online classes is moving in the positive direction the marks i have uh, uh, obtained is also moving in the positive direction so a positive covariance indicates that as the variable deviates from the mean the other variable deviates in the same direction Negative covariance would be in the opposite direction. That means if one increases, the other decreases. If I spend more time on watching Netflix, then probably I'll be getting less marks. So this is a negative covariance. Uh, correlation is exactly related to co uh, uh, sorry. Correlation is related to covariance. Uh, correlation basically is standardized. I divide the covariance by uh, uh, standard deviation. I get correlation. You don't have to talk about the division and the subtractions because uh, we just uh, bothered about the results. So, for example, uh, uh, we'll just see, you know, uh, one or two examples on Microsoft Excel and all these things will be clearer to you. So let's talk about uh, the different kinds of correlation. So we are going to talk about generally the Pearson's uh, uh, correlation coefficient because my two data, they are both quantitative. They are both interval data. I can be having ordinal data or I can be having nominal data. I'm sure you remember nominal means I'm just naming the categories. Ordinal means I'm going to talk about uh, only the uh, uh, ranks. And in quantitative, I'm talking about the interval data. So if, if both my variables, they are interval data, then what I get is Pearson's correlation coefficient. If they're both ordinal data, then I'll be talking of Swearman's row or Kendall's tau. That's uh, not in our syllabus, so I'm not going to talk about that. If both are nominal data, then I'm going to talk about uh, you know, phi or lambda. They are uh, all, all important tests. If they are of different types, these are all just examples. You don't, don't have to get worried about that. We are going to talk only about this Pearson's uh, correlation coefficient. That is what we are going to discuss. And that's why you know these terms are very important, the interval data and the ordinal data and the nominal data, because the kind of measurement you're having will have a, a bearing on the results that you'll be using. And he is the gentleman who in 1896 uh, uh, 
you know discovered or he uh, kind of proposed this uh, correlation coefficient so if he didn't do that we wouldn't be having this particular class so that was about 104 years ago in a paper called philosophical transactions of the royal society of london so uh, this is uh, mr pearson so if you have any reason to uh, like statistics you can say thank you to him so we just uh, spoke about the covariance so uh, if we standardize the covariance standardizing means i am dividing the covariance with the standard deviation as i said you don't have to bother about the uh, uh, formula there but you just have to understand what it means so if the correlation coefficient uh, is, is plus 1 means that it is positively correlated if it is minus 1 means it is perfectly negatively correlated so the correlation coefficient is always between plus 1 and minus 1 if the coefficient is zero that means there is no correlation so let me just explain that to you in a uh, diagram again so this one is a positive correlation so as this increases this also so i'm getting a straight line at almost a 45 degrees so this is positive perfect correlation this means they are highly correlated these are all observations as you can see so these are uh, the two variables as i said this could be the time spent on uh, online classes this is the marks you're getting so this is 0.09 this is low positive correlation as you can see they are scattered they are, they are not on a single line they are they are sp spread off this one is having no correlation this does not this does not have any association at all so i can say this is unrelated this is totally uh, uncorrelated this one is negative correlation so uh, this is because of the direction this was increasing so as this was increasing this was also increasing here as this is increasing this point is decreasing so this is low negative correlation this is perfect negative correlation as this value uh, increases this value decreases so it could be the example on the time spent on netflix and the time uh, or the or the marks you get in your examination this is high negative correlation so we uh, have a method of drawing these scatter plots in today's lecture i'm not going to talk about these scatter plots but this is one way of displaying very easily uh, displaying very conveniently what is correlation so these are very important things to understand this will always be between plus 1 and minus 1 this is the very easy formula of correlation coefficient the good news is that you don't even have to bother about this formula this is all done by uh, excel for example and i will show you two or three uh, examples of uh, correlation and that would uh, probably uh, make it easier for you to understand basically this is about the distance from the mean and you know uh, you are uh, you know dividing the variance with the standard deviation so just to tell you that this is how people used to do it before uh, excel or google sheet or spss or r was invented people would uh, do the formulas by hand our job is a lot more easier it's very important because it explains variability it exp uh, it, it uh, you know tells us that, that, that there is an association it does not mean causation and i will keep on repeating that it does not mean causation it just means that the numbers i have the data i have they have a certain association that i can see it can mean causation at times but generally does not mean and it's very important for journalists to understand that that correlation does not mean causation one thing is uh, changing as uh, at the same time as the other does not mean that one thing caused the other it's just that we can see from the data that uh, these association uh, is of this particular type so that does not guarantee there may be co causation but then you'll have to have uh, more sophisticated ways of proving it so say for example you got uh, you know these are the names so these are nominal variables a b c d e f g h i they are the name of the people this is the score you got in your communication research this is the score you got in your statistics are they correlated or not so in uh, a moments time as i go to microsoft excel i'll try and show it to you whether they are correlated or not so uh, as i see this i can't see anything i can't make out anything so this is 9 this is 8 this is 7 this is 6 uh so as it goes down this goes down or as it goes down this goes up so i can't see anything so let me see uh what we get out of it so uh i'll stop the presentation here and i'll uh, start sharing the microsoft excel uh, uh window so that i can explain that to you in a 
few steps. And if you have questions on that, we'll have questions just after that. So I'm sharing the Microsoft Excel screen. Uh, I'm trying to zoom it as well. I'm sure you all can see the screen. OK, yes, if you sir. can't, yeah, thank you so much. Right. So just let me talk about this. So I, uh, if you remember, I just showed you this particular scene, uh, screen there. Now, this is the score you get in research. This is the score you get in statistics. I'm trying to find out whether there is any correlation between these two things or not. So for that, what we'll have to do is we'll have to use a particular uh, command in Excel. Before that, if you are using it for the first time, then what you have to do, you have to go to uh, home. You have to go to options. This is what is in MS 2019. I'm sure others also have this. And then you have a thing called add-ins. And then you go to manage Excel add-in, and then you go, and then you tick uh, uh, analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack VBA. If you if you click all these two, then you can see something called uh, data. I mean, uh, these are the various screens. You know, if you uh, put, uh, if you press data here, then you'll get to see data analysis on the exact right hand side of the screen. Otherwise, if you do not uh, check this option, you are not going to see data analysis there. So I click on data analysis, and then I get this particular drop down. There are many options there. One of the options is correlation. We also get covariance. It starts with ANOVA. We'll talk some of these things in, in future examples. I'll be using Excel because it is uh, easily accessible, and uh, uh, it makes a lot of uh, sense. So if I just press correlation. I just have to tell it what are the inputs. So here, my inputs have to be the score in statistics. So uh, sorry, I'll have to tell Excel that I'm going to find out the correlation between these things. The, uh, the uh, first label are rows, so I'll have to check that. And where do I want to get the output? So I'm, I'm, uh, I've put in here E there, so that I want to get the output here. If I click OK, I get the correlation as minus 0.11214. So if you just remember what we discussed, that if it is negative, it will be uh, there's, there'll be a minus there. So these two are negatively correlated, and since this uh, number is so less. So they are partially, or the uh, negative correlation is very less. It's not of a very high order. So I get some association, but this association is not very huge. But at least you know the, uh, this gives me an idea about the association between the marks. So they are negatively correlated. So score in research and score, these are fictitious. So don't uh, draw any conclusion out of it. They are just fictitious uh, students, uh, and they are these are the marks they get in communication research. And these are the marks they get in statistics. If I get the uh, correlation score, this is 0.11214. So how did I do it? Very simple. I go to uh, data analysis. I click on to correlation. Then I have to provide the input range. So input range has to be what I want to get here. If I wrongly, if I just let me show you one uh, wrong thing so that you know it, it uh, you can understand that. If, if I wrongly. Uh, Take this one as well, the student part here as well. And if I take it here, and if I try and get it, uh, if I try and get it, it will tell me correlation input range contains non-numeric data. So exactly what I told you. If my data is not numeric, if it is not interval, then there is no correlation. So I had included this also. So this is categorical data, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So Excel tells me, in fact, Excel gets angry and tell me that please give me only non numeric uh, give me numeric data otherwise i won't help you so that's it so i'll have to tell it again okay this is not correct this is where i have to choose from so you go to the first point and then you go to the last point and then you find the correlation and this is how it goes the good thing about excel is that you know it uh, yeah it wants to overwrite so let it be i'll get the same thing the good thing about excel is that even if i have huge amount of data excel will uh, 
not uh, 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 have a problem in doing that. Say, for example, I have this huge data. This is about the consumption and this is about the investment. So this is from the year 1950 and it goes on till 1952. So if I want to find out whether they are correlated, whether so these are, as you can see, economics figures. This is the amount of consumption and this is the investment that I'm making. So again, the same thing. I'll go to uh, data analysis. I'll go to correlation. I'll uh, try and choose, uh, you know, what the things are. So by default, it, it has taken my last figure that I gave it about the marks and all. So I'll have to choose from here. Shift here. Excel tells uh, Excel now knows that I have given the input range. They are grouped by columns, and I'll have to take this. That the first row is a label. As you can see, the first row here is a label. So I have to tell it that. Where do I get an output? I can want to get an output in a new worksheet. I can get it in a new workbook, or I can get it here only. So I want to get it in E. So I've already given here E. So output will be here, as you will just see in a moment's time. So here it is. Uh, if you can see that, if I can zoom it further, this is the correlation. This is negatively correlated minus 0.7. So it makes sense. If I consume more, I will not be able to invest more. So it makes a lot of sense that when the consumption is more, the investment will be less. They are negatively correlated. And this is the result I'm getting. And I'm getting uh, this you know, as point, minus 0.7 which is highly negatively correlated. Anything above uh, 0.7 is highly negatively correlated. And it, so there are ranges, you know, if it is too small, it can be, be around 0.5, it's uh, moderate. If less than 0.5, it's less. So different people have different ways of uh, devising it. So what we have tried to show you here is that uh, I am uh, easily able to get association between two things very easily just at the click of a button. And that's a very, very powerful tool to have. As I said, uh, some of us have done, you know, uh, our dissertations in the undergraduate and other places where we simply describe about, uh, uh, you know, descriptive statistics. That if uh, so, how many people watch this? How many people watch that? So on and so forth. Now I'm able to get some kind of an association. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, able to get a more sophisticated understanding of how these things work, and that's a very important tool to have. Uh, I'll just show you another example, uh, uh, and then uh, we'll uh, uh, open it up for questions. Say, for example, again, this is fictitious. 527 applicants to SN College. So SN College is just a fictitious college; it, it doesn't exist. Uh, this is the number. Of, uh, this is the marks in English. This is the marks in maths. I want to find out whether there is any correlation there or not. So, if you have data, you can do anything. You can. I mean, this is just the beginning. As I said, you can make a lot of uh, uh, you can you can find a lot of analysis from there so i again go to data analysis i click on to correlation okay i'll have to give it the input range so i click here and i tell it okay my input is from here starting from english and as you can see there are 570 students means this is big data this is lots and lots of data so i'll just uh, okay 529 students I told it this is the input range, labels in the first row. And again, I'm telling Excel that I want my output in E1. I can get it anywhere. As I said, I, I can get it in another worksheet also. I can get it in a, another. So, or, or for example, I can want to get it in uh, D, for example. I don't want it in E. So I, I want it here. OK. I'm getting it here. So this is where my output is visible. This tells me that they are positively correlated. So your marks in English and your marks in mathematics are positively correlated. Somebody who's good in English is also good in maths as far as uh, this data is concerned. So I can only draw conclusions about the data I have. I can't extrapolate it to the entire population. I can't always even suggest that there is some causation there. I cannot suggest that you know somebody is getting high marks in uh, mathematics because he or she got uh, high marks in uh, uh, statistics as well. So there is no causation. There is only association. And that is a very important tool to have. If we know the association, if we know things are correlated, then it makes a lot of sense to us. And then we can you know make, uh, make a lot of uh, 
predictions or a lot of un our understanding about the uh, uh, phenomenon uh, gets a lot better. So as I said, you know, uh, uh, the first part was just about the explanation. Very important to understand that correlation comes from covariance. Covariance means, how, uh, you know, whether they are varying, how much their variance is from the mean. If I divide the covariance by the standard deviation, I get correlation. I don't have to do anything because Excel does it for me. So uh, that's all.